Hey everyone, welcome to part 8 of our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. Today we're going to talk about using VBA in Access to control the page setup of your spreadsheet. And by that, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, over here in Excel, here's a spreadsheet we're going to work, we'll be working with today. Over in Excel, you go to Page Layout and click on this Expand button there. We've got all these wonderful options here. You can set the the orientation, you can set margins, you can center things, center your, your your content horizontally on the page, you can add headers, footers, you can change them for uh, odd and even, you can print grid lines, you can tell it uh, a certain area to print, you can repeat certain rows at the top of each new page. So that's what we're going to be exploring how to do from Visual Basic. So let me give you a real world example of why you might need to do this. I had a customer who was producing pages and pages of output and within that she had she was creating a grids of one or two pages in length that were going to be sent to bunches of different people and she needed page breaks between the grids that were going to each uh, each different person and they didn't want to have to mess with it at all to format it they wanted it ready to go ready to print so they wanted to print a button press a button rather to create a spreadsheet and then they wanted to press the quick print button and have it come out of this out of the printer ready to be folded and inserted. So already centered, already, you know, with the headings right, the footers right, the page breaks right, they're just ready to go. So that's what we're gonna talk about doing today. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how our spreadsheet looked at the end of our last example. When we go into a page preview, you can see that our grid is is not centered nothing is centered it's all to the left so we're going to close excel not save it we're going to go over to our code window i'm not going to go over any of the previous code we have uh, in our example just suffice it to say that we have code that uh, opens a record set pulling data from a table uh, we iterate through that record set and uh, lay it down on the spreadsheet like you just saw and we were doing some formatting with lines and colors and whatnot and that's what we have above here. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to center our content on the page. So we're still inside of our inside of our width that is uh, the uh, the worksheet that we're working with. So inside of the worksheet, we can do our, our dot notation and get to the page setup, and we want to uh, center horizontally is what I want to do here and this is a property you have to set to true or false so we'll set that to true and click save let's give it a quick look and go to print preview to see it you can see now that we've got everything centered on the page now what I want to do next is we're going to replace replace this header with a page header instead of cells on the screen so let's scroll up really fast and find where I wrote that page header and put that date I'm going to comment that out so you can see that we'll have, so we won't have two headers, uh, one on top of the other. Again, a page setup again. This time, you want to deal with the center header. So you have, in your headers, you have center header, a left header, a right header. And for footers, you have a left footer, center footer, and a right footer. I want to do a center footer here. And you just type in, in, uh, in quotes, the text that you want to go there. And that is it. So let's produce that really fast. Again, this is a page header, so you don't see it. You don't see it right now. You only see it when you go to your print preview. So there it is. It's very tiny. So we're going to format that so it looks a little bit better. Okay, and you do that within this string. So the, the center header takes a string. That's all it takes. But they uh, Microsoft gives us bunch of different codes that we can use to change the appearance. There are ampersand codes to modify the appearance and uh, they've got some to insert dates and insert page numbers, things of that nature. I'm going to use ampersand B right here and that will change everything that follows the B to bold. Okay. Now I also want to add a second line to our to our header. I want to add today's date so how we get a second line 
is we're going to use the character, the uh, BBA character function. Okay, and what the character function does is you give it a CHR, and then you type in the ASCII number of character that you want. Uh, 13 is carriage return. 10, I believe, I think, I hope I get this right, I think 10 is line feed and 13 is carriage return. And often you'll see them used together. You do a, a line feed and a carriage return to, to, to put you on the next line. And here in the header, I've found that you only need the 13. So that's all we're going to do. And this is a string, by the way, so we have to put an ampersand to connect it to the previous string. So character 13 just gives us a second line. And then to that, we're going to string today's date. And we're going to do that with the ampersand D. Oops, quotes. Ampersand D will give you today's date. So let's have a quick look at how that what that gives us. Print preview. So then we've got now we've got a bold discount listing and today's date. Now I'm gonna mess with it a little bit further. We're going to change the font and the font size. So I'm gonna put in front of this ampersand B, I'm gonna put ampersand 14. That is font size. And in front of the date, I'm going to do ampersand 12. I want the date to be a little bit smaller than our top. Our top, and then we're going to get really kind of weird. Ampersand double quotes Cambria. There's a space there. So what we've got is. The way the ampersand works, if I type it right here as a comment, what it's supposed to look like is ampersand, a single quote, and then the name, the name of the font you want, if I can type it, and single quotes. However, this is all going inside of a string. So in order to get this single quote, we have to double quote it. Okay? So this quote matches up with that quote. Okay? And to get a single quote inside of that outer quote, you got to double quote it. Here and here. All right. Let's take a quick look at what we get. Do that. Oop, page preview. No, no print. I clicked the wrong button. Print preview. So there we go. Now we have a bolded discount listing and a slightly smaller bolded date at the top of the page. Next, let's do, let's give it a footer. I'm going to just throw this in there, or uh, copy it in, so you have to watch me type it. We use the left footer, and we're going to put the date down there, not because we need, we absolutely have to have two dates on the page, but just to show you a, another way of doing this. Okay, maybe you don't want your date at the top, maybe you want it in the footer. So here's another way to handle that. You could do format now, like I've got here. You could also use the ampersand D, like I did up top, either one of these. Okay, I'm going to do it this way just to show a different way of doing it. And I'm going to copy in here um, page numbers on the right side, the right footer. This is page of total pages. If you, uh, if you have column headings that you want to repeat at the top of every page, you can do that with the print title rows. And this takes a range. You have to give it a range. It won't take us. If you need to do a single row, you've got to give it, you've got to give it that row in your colon. And that row a second time. Okay, in our case, we only have um, we only have a single row, so we're repeating dollar sign four colon dollar sign four. All right, so we'll save that and click uh, produce spreadsheet, and then there we go. Now, again, uh, didn't need didn't need any of those last three things we just did because I had such a tiny grid to begin with. But just wanted to show that that it, it does work and doesn't uh, affect our output at least. So one more thing to talk about would be the page break. And I only want to do it because I mentioned it, even though uh, it's not a part of the page setup properties. It's part of the, it is a member of the range class or a, a property. But I mentioned it earlier on when you have bunches of bunches of uh, pages of output, you need a page break in certain places. You can put your range in there and then type in page break. And it takes a, a constant called Excel page break manual. There we go. Now, notice what I've done for the range here. We have our note up here that is on line AI. And so I'm going to put my page break below that. And that shouldn't affect us much. Let's see. 
back. Yep, we've still got one page, so there's nothing on the second page to, to print. And there you go. So uh, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and found this useful. And I'll talk to you next time.